Hey everybody, it's Joel for No & Co. And uh, today we're going to talk about a really good powder horn. Last week we talked about one that wasn't so good. Um, this particular powder horn was carried by Eli Kimball. Um, Eli Kimball was born in Bradford, Massachusetts in 1759. And sometime before 1775 he moved to Amherst, New Hampshire. Um, he was um, in the militia in 1776 carrying this horn. And on the side right here, you can see where it's marked or it's carved and it says Eli Kimball his horn made it Mount Independence on October 30 1776 about the time of General Arnold's defeat on Lake Champlain uh, General Arnold was defeated at Valcor Bay and then at what now called what's now called Arnold's Bay uh, where he scuttled the last of his fleet Eli Kimball had that event carved on his horn probably about a week or two later but it's a great horn got some simple carvings and um, inscribed lines and a fish, um, cool pine plug, got some nice wear to it, nice age, uh, but just a really cool identified horn. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Joel for Known Co. and for Military Monday today we're going to talk a little bit more about powder horns. Uh, a couple weeks ago we talked about a bad horn, this one, and then last week we talked about a good one, this one here. And I've got a couple of references here which are great, I use them all the time. First one is Drums of Beating, Trumpet Sounding by Bill Guffman, the late Bill Guffman. Fantastic book, um, great reference, all different carvers, um, ways to figure out, you know, possibly who the carver was of your horn. And another one, uh, Powder Horns, Documents of History by Tom Grinslade, who also wrote a great Fowler book that we talked about about a month ago. Uh, this is another great one, uh, up to date, uh, great images, um, great one to have in your library. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. and from Military Mondays, we're talking about Bowie knives. And we have this great one here made by Blofeld in London. Uh, really nice blade, German silver fittings, rosewood grip, uh, leather scabbard with German silver fittings on it also. And we got a bunch more coming up in the spring auction. Um, so come back and check us out. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. and last week we talked about uh, Bowie knives a little bit and now I'm going to bring out some reference books uh, One the antique Bowie knife book um, has great pictures great references some wonderful knives an oldie Robert Abel's classic Bowie knife uh, great images great information in here And then this one the knife in homespun America by Madison Grant um, It's got Bowie knives as well as folding knives also so uh, if you got Bowie knives, check out these references. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, today for Military Monday we're going to talk about uh, this little Rook rifle uh, made by John Dixon in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, they're a really cool little rifle. This one is a 22, uh, 22 long rifle actually caliber. Uh, really nice walnut stock, checkered wrist. Uh, it's got some great color case hardening on the receiver. Uh, the bluing is still great. But it's just made as a rifle that you can take out shooting uh, game, small game rabbits and such with it. Uh, real light, uh, but it's just a kind of a work of art. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno Co. And today we're going to talk a little bit about dating musket flints for your flintlock ignition musket or rifle later on. On the top here we have English blade flints. These are early 19th century. Prior to that the English used spall form flints which are right down here you can see the shape difference these were used during the American Revolution and early 19th century they went the English went to the blade form over here we have French blades the French were using the blade form earlier you can also see the color difference in the flints uh, from the French mines so if you have a Revolutionary War musket you want the right flint for it for an English gun you want a spall if you're doing a 19th century a mass militia gun or or anything from the 1830s um, you can use the English blades, and if you've got a French gun or you're doing a musket from the American Revolution when thousands of French flints were being imported, you can use the French blades. Thanks for uh, watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co., and today we're going to talk about some swords used by officers on April 19th, 1775. Uh, I get asked a lot, uh, what's the most common type of sword used by a, a field officer? And by far the most common form is a small sword. We have one right here, brass hilt. They're also steel hilted versions. 
um, that have a provenance to the 19th, but mostly brass. Next one, same form, but this one's a uh, Boston Silver Hilt. Fairly rare, but there are a few that were known and carried on the 19th up through the Bunker Hill um, and through the Siege of Boston. And then another one we have um, is of a naval form uh, of cutlass. It is very similar to one that was carried by an officer who was killed at the Jason Russell House on April 19th, 1775. His sword was passed down through the family. Uh, it's got a very similar stag a grip, a crude iron hilt, and an imported blade, but still carried by a lieutenant um, on the 19th. So there you go. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. And last week for Military Monday, we talked about um, swords at the start of the American Revolution carried by officers. And for a couple of quick references here, um, we got Swords and Blades of the American Revolution by George Newman. Uh, there's some great early swords in here, some of the small swords we talked about. Um, and then up through most of the different countries that fought later on in the war also. And then for the silver hilt we talked about last week, um, silver mounted swords from the Latimer family collection. Um, wonderful collection of swords uh, that were sold as early up through the uh, uh, 19th century uh, but great stuff in here thanks for watching see you next week hey it's joel from Bruno and co and a few weeks ago we talked about proper musket flints or flints for your fouling piece um, and one of the best references for that is this 18th century gun flicks from fort michel mackinac um, out in michigan uh, it's a great book to pick up. It's got a lot of uh, archaeological recoveries and um, just a great, great flint book. Um, about one of the only ones out there, actually. Um, thanks for watching. Hey, everybody, it's Joel from Bruno and Co. And from Military Monday, we've got this great uh, Bowie knife made by Will and Fink in San Francisco, um, one of the American makers of these knives. Um, it's got a brass um, outer grip. Um, and if you look at the blade, it's got a little bit of wear on it from use. Um, light maker's marks here, Will and Fink, on both sides of the Ricasso. Um, and it's got the original scabbard. Uh, this will be coming up in the uh, Spring Arms and Military auction. Thank you for watching. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. And for this Military Monday, I got this great um, circa 1680-1700 iron-mounted uh, French flintlock pistol. Um, other than a little bit of cleaning, nothing's ever been done to it. Um, it's great. The lock is marked uh, Magazine Royale for the Royal Magazine in Paris. Um, just a great, rare, early pistol. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. And for this week's Military Mondays, we're going to be talking about this great Russian 12-pound cannon we have. Um, dredged out of the harbor in uh, Sevastopol after the war uh, by John Gowan, who was a Lynn Mass uh, na native. He brought it back, it was presented to him by the Russian government, um, brought it home, and it ended up in a local museum. Um, it's got some markings on the trunnions on either side, and a great marking, foundry marking and date on the breech. Um, just a cool gun with a cool history we'll be talking about more. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Joel from Bruno & Co. And today we're going to talk about another reference book. We've been doing references every every few weeks. Um, this one, if you're looking for things that were imported to the Confederacy from England, muskets, swords, um, other material, uh, called the English Connection. Um, fantastic reference. Uh, it'll help you when you're learning things before you purchase or even cataloging. Thanks for watching. That's B-R-U-N-E-A-U.